Hey everybody, in this video I wanted to talk about the MCAT exam, what to expect for the MCAT, everything other than the content which we've already talked about in a previous video. You're going to sign up for an MCAT, for, an M for the MCAT. You're going to sign up for a date, uh, and what you're going to sign up for a time. So typically it's the exam starts around 8 a.m. All right, so this is the, the exam start time. So they're going to tell you to show up at maybe an hour before. And what you're going to do is you're going to show up. They're going to ask. They're going to show you a locker. They're going to give you keys to a locker. It's usually pretty small. Uh, you can put your food if you brought any food. You can put your uh, your, your car keys if you drove there, whatever, in that locker. Uh, and then you essentially you're going to wait. And what they're going to do is they're going to let you in one by one into the exam room. So one person at a time is going to go in. So some people might start, for example, 7:45. Other people might start around 8:15. The 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 time that is roughly eight o'clock. Uh, and they're going to let you in one by one. Uh, into the exam room. So before you go in, they're going to use a metal detector to make sure you don't have any electronics on you. So I would recommend you wear clothes that are relatively comfortable and basically clothes that you're comfortable in, uh, comfortable taking the exam in, right? So you go into the exam and you sit down and then you get a screen. And then now if you've taken practice AAMC exams, you're going to see this. There's going to be a picture. It's going to be your picture. Uh, and it's going to, to you want to make sure that your name is there. And then you're going to start the exam. And then you're going to take this section, All right? 95 minutes. So let's say you did start around 8 a.m. That means you're going to finish around 9.35. And then you're going to have a 10-minute break. Now, during the breaks, you can leave the exam room. Actually, you can leave the exam room even during the exam. So for example, let's say you're here and you decide that I really, really have to go to the bathroom. Uh, that's fine. You can leave. You leave the exam room. Uh, you go to the bathroom, the exam does not pause, uh, and then you have to, when you want to come back in, you have to be sc screened in. So they, they do the quick metal detector, they make sure you're not, you know, you don't have any electronics, blah, 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 uh, and then you get to go back in. So you can leave during the exam, but the downside is that, uh, you know, your, your time keeps going. So anyway, you go in, you finish your exam, finish this first section at 9.35, let's say, you have a 10 minute break, 9.45. So you can leave. What you do, what I would recommend you do is you leave, use the bathroom if you if you have to go. And even if you don't really have to go, you should probably still use the bathroom just in case. Um, and then get a quick drink of water uh, if you're if that's what you're you know you want to do. Uh, and then go back into the exam at 9:45. What you want to do is the moment the clock strike or the moment the time runs out on this section, you want to forget everything about this section. There was probably a question that you you know you really worried about, you want to know about. Forget about it. It doesn't matter. You you're done. Uh, use this time to de-stress. Uh, take a sh short walk around the around the room, uh, or you know around the, the the building if you're allowed to. Um, typically, they don't let you leave the building, so you have to stay inside. And then go back in uh, and take this section. This section is 90 minutes, so hour and a half. So that means that you're gonna be in there until about 11:15. And again, the same thing with this section. You can leave if you want to, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At 11:15. You're going to be done with this section. Time is going to run out, and you can get up out of your chair. Uh, now the time is going to count down 30 minutes. Now you have your 30-minute lunch break. What should you do in that 30-minute lunch break? Um, don't actually eat lunch. I don't recommend you eat lunch. What I would recommend is the morning beforehand, you, you eat a small breakfast, something that you're comfortable with, something that you're not going to, you know, it's not going to be too heavy, obviously. Uh, you're not going to be much in the mood for eating, but you should eat something light. During this 30 minute lunch break, I do not recommend you eat lunch because if you do, you're probably going to be pretty, you might like crash after lunch. Uh, but I would recommend, so what I did is I brought some trail mix. Uh, you know, you can buy those little packets. I think you get them at like Costco or whatever, or you can just get them from the store, a little packet of trail mix, uh, some nuts and some other stuff. And then I also recommend eating maybe a granola bar, something that, to keep your carbs up, something to, keep, to give you some energy, but I wouldn't really recommend you eat a full lunch. It's just probably not a great idea. Uh, you're going to go back into the exam room at 11.45. You can take your bio-biochem section. So that's, an, again, a 95-minute section. So what is that going to be? That is going to be 125. And now you have your final 10-minute break. And now you start this section at 135. This section is also 95 minutes. So what is the math on that? 90, 135, 235, 305, 315. 
So 315, you finish Psych Soch. And uh, this, of course, assumes that you take the whole time on each of these sections. You don't have to take the whole time. You can, you can pause and say, or you can just move on. You can say, I'm done with this section. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you do that. I would recommend you, if you, run, if you finish early, go back and check your work. Uh, if you finish early, go back and do the, the whole exam again if necessary. Um, and get yourself in the habit of doing that on your practices as well so that you don't, you know, it doesn't feel strange when you're doing it on the real exam. You want to really maximize your, your, uh, your score on this test. You wanna, if you finish early, that's a bad sign. That means you have to go back and do it again, do, do more, you know, uh, review it or double check or whatever. Anyway, you finish your exam at 315, let's say. Now what they're going to do is they're going to ask you, there's, there's always a question that comes up about whether you want to void the exam. And uh, this is a big, interesting concept. Basically, after you're done, let's say you, uh, you, were feeling, you fell asleep during this bio-biochem se section and you don't remember anything. Let's say you ate a very heavy lunch, you fell asleep, and uh, you woke up with you know, five minutes to spare. If you void the exam, if you choose to void after you're done, you, you'll never see a score med schools will never see a score it'll be as if you didn't take the exam nobody nobody would know that you voided it i wouldn't really recommend you do that uh, again unless something really strange happens uh, during the exam um, or for example you decide beforehand that you want to avoid for example i know some people who weren't ready to take their exam um, but they had already signed up so they decided to take the exam see how it went and then they voided their score that's an option but i wouldn't recommend you you avoid because even if you feel a little bit nervous at the end, maybe you know, you're like, I'm, I'm sure I screwed up that question on, you know, that, that uh, biochemistry question. It's not a big deal. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you void. So take the exam uh, and, uh, and then you're done. Uh, and then you get out at, let's say, 345. By the time you get all your stuff and everything, you get out at 345 and, you know, enjoy your day. Enjoy the rest of the, your day. Have fun. Forget about your MCAT. Your score doesn't come out for a while anyway, so <laughs> it's not that hard to forget about it, maybe. Um, so go you know, hang out with your friends. Do all the things that you've been putting off while you were studying for your MCAT. So that's the way I would generally recommend approaching it. Now, a couple of questions that people have. Should you drink coffee? I personally would recommend it. I, I, I find that coffee really helps me. So I, I strongly... Actually, I don't drink coffee. I drink an energy drink. I, I'm not a coffee drinker. Uh, so what I do is I bring an energy drink and I drink it, drink one here and then I drink one here. Uh, it does make me go to the bathroom a lot, which is kind of unpleasant, but um, I find it really like wakes me up and helps me to stay alert. The one thing I would say though, is whatever you're going to choose to do, you're going to choose to drink an energy drink. Maybe you decide you want to eat like a full course meal uh, at your lunch break. Do a few practice runs beforehand. So take a few full length exams where you wake up in the morning Preferably leave the house, go to a library, go to your public library or your university library, uh, show up at 8 a.m., take your exam. If you have to use the bathroom during the test, then go use the bathroom, come back, and then wait a f like two minutes while uh, to simulate them scanning you back in. Take your chem phys section, take your cars, take all the sections. For example, if it turns out that, that not eating lunch at all makes you really, really sleepy uh, and tired during the last section, uh, it's better that you figure that out during your practice runs than during your actual exam. Maybe, maybe you try the energy drink idea and then it makes you really jittery. Uh, it's better to figure that out during your practice exam. So the one thing I will say is to figure out a routine. Uh, you probably have some experience with that because you've probably taken other exams for other classes, but you have to wake up early in the morning. You have to figure out what you want to eat, uh, but it's probably never been this long. So really get a, get a sense for what you want to do, what your body uh, prefers. Again, for me, I'll say what for me, um, I would eat like a, something with carbs, like something, some type of like a trail mix or a granola bar in the morning, keep some water with me. I would drink an energy drink right before going into this section. And then uh, I, would, uh, I would take another, drink another one right before bio biochem. It's not ideal. It makes you jittery. It makes you, you know, it has some, some downsides, but I, you know, if that's what you want to do, then make sure to do it, test it out beforehand. And again, I would eat something with carbs, uh, granola bar, uh, trail mix during the lunch break, and then I would do that. And then afterward, you, you can go and you can have your big, big uh, dinner or lunch or whatever. You, so you leave the exam room and you can go out and eat. Uh, and don't stress over the exam after you're done. It's not worth it. Um, I know that people like to do that anyway. They, they like to, you know, uh, go back and look up some of the questions they got wrong. That's understandable, but that's what's, you know, try not to do that. I'm always happy to help as far as this goes. It's uh you know, the MCAT is a brutal exam. The MCAT is a stressful exam. It's a seven hour and 20 minute exam. 
seven hours and 20 minutes. Um, it's hard. It's not an easy thing to do at all. It's brutal, but uh, you can do it. Practice, 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 practice. So you know what to expect. So you know how your body reacts to it. You know, you know how it feels. Uh, and I re strongly recommend eating something. Eat something. Eat a snack. Uh, actually, there's a, there are a lot of interesting studies that that thinking uses a huge number of calories. So while you're thinking, while you're taking this exam, it's kind of like if you had worked out, if you had, uh, you know, if you if you were playing this playing a sport, if you were an athlete uh, for this period of time. Actually, late, lately the the chess players. Uh, people like Magnus Carlsen, who's the world champion in chess. A lot of these these chess players they hire they hire nutritionists, you know, people to get their bodies in shape because it turns out that your body and your mind are very very strongly linked. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe, uh, and uh, I'll see you next time.